in this episode. In spite of the market being really, really good and inventory being, uh, being low, if a house does not show well, it really suffers, right? So I always tell my sellers, as you guys, the most important thing, we want to get rid of that, what I call the ugh factor, where they walk in, they ugh, right? Those five things to me are very, very important. And so um, like a lot of people want to go into renovating bathrooms and renovating kitchens and doing the whole nine yards. And you're not going to get your money back for that. Plus it takes an awful lot of time and it's going to delay uh, putting it on the market. So I always start with those first five issues. Yeah, and, and the reality is you're, you're saving their nest egg. You're getting them more of a return and you're fronting the liability for it. Welcome back, everybody. We have our weekly installation of a conversation with myself and Martin Bauma of Bauma Group Realtors. And today we are going to dig into the conversation of how do you prepare your home for the market? What are the kind of renovations and little touches that are worth making? And what's not worth making? And also when you consider making those renovations, what are some things you maybe need to pre-manage and think about before you go ahead and start that pre-listing process? So Martin, how are you today? I'm doing great, how about yourself? Fantastic, fantastic. Christmas is uh, sneaking up yes. on us and I have failed to get a proper Power Ranger costume. So I have some homework to do. <laughs> well, I'm all done, so uh, I can relax. <laughs> oh good, you can help me. <laughs> All right. So, so you, uh, you actually were interviewed yesterday, right, by Homelight. And um, one of the things that you guys did talk about, and we're going to discuss this this morning, is you know renovations and, and things sellers could pay attention to to better prepare their home for the market. So let's go ahead and dig into that. Um, why don't you sort of just give us give us the the ground uh, that we're looking at here? Yeah, you know it's interesting. One of the things I've really noticed this year, in spite of the market being really really good and inventory being uh, being low, if a house does not show well it really suffers, right? Uh, people today, um, and there's several reasons for that. Um, I think one of the main reasons is people don't wanna buy a house and then have contractors come into their house to do the work that needs to be done, especially with COVID-19, right? With the, with the surge in that. Um, but it's also people buy on an emotional basis. So when they walk into a house and they go, Ugh, right? Um, the emotional part goes, is, disappears because you have first the emotional uh, reaction and then you have the logical, then they go through into the logic, right? If you can't get them to the emotional part, it's going to be hard to get them to the logic part. So I always tell my sellers, as you guys, the most important thing, we want to get rid of that, what I call the ugh factor, where they walk in, they go, ugh, right? And so I always have a real rough rule of thumb. I said, you know, the most important thing is the landscaping has got to be sharp because that's probably one of the most important uh, initial, you know, impact that they have on the buyer. The front door has to be in excellent condition. The floors and the walls have to be redone or painted, like the carpeting, if it needs to be done, has to be replaced, the walls have to be painted, and the countertops have to be current. Those five things to me are very, very important. And so um, like a lot of people want to go into renovating bathrooms and renovating kitchens and doing the whole nine yards, and you're not going to get your money back for that. Plus, it takes an awful lot of time, and it's going to delay um, putting it on the market. So I always start with those first five issues. Yeah, and you know what I always start with? And it's something that I cannot believe how many people overlook, cleaning. Wow, well, that goes with, yeah, that goes with us, yes. I know, but you know what, this, what's really interesting to me is how many sellers don't, don't really consider it. And so I've got a gal and she's pretty affordable and she'll come and she'll just do a once over from top to bottom. And I've even like, just, just cleaning up kitchen cabinets and kind of like, you know, putting, putting whatever uh, cleaner is on it to make it like take the grease off, make it shine. The right. silliest little touches oh, yeah. really add a lot of bang to the house just in that. And then, then we talk countertops and front doors, but it's amazing to me how many people don't, don't clean their house. Well, yeah. that goes up. Yeah. The, the, that, that goes almost without saying, but you know, that's a good point because uh, you can do all of this and if the house is, is uh, a mess. Yeah. Cleanliness is very important. Yeah. And so is smell. <laughs> oh yeah. Those two, those two issues are, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we said, you said landscaping, let's just go back to this landscaping and um, just out of curiosity, do you have like a fantastic company you love to send your clients to? Yeah. We literally have a landscaper. We've got a floor installing person. We've got a painter um, and a handyman. Right. And so we can get them in pretty quickly um, to get those things taken care of. Beautiful. And, and so I, I also imagine that like, if you're sending quite a few clients to these vendors. You trust the vendors. They've given five-star experience to your clients and you're now a source of business for them. I would imagine that your, your clients also get white glove service with those, those vendors. So it's interesting you bring that up because um, what happens is we get a, you know, you get a vendor who's really good, right? And then all of a sudden you start using them a whole lot and then they bring on helpers, right? 
And then what happens is they're so busy, they, they leave the job to the helpers. And so we're not getting the actual person we hired initially. And we've had some not very good situations this past year. So one of the, just something you know to think about, um, we now are, hey, listen, if we're working with you. You do not push us off on someone else. Now, if you are gonna push us off on someone else, make sure they are as good as you. We had some actually embarrassing situations this year where one of our vendors really dropped the ball. Um, ended up costing me money because my, you know, when my, when I refer someone, that's an extension of me. Absolutely. hundred percent. And yeah. you know, who's done a really good job at this. And, um, you know, we should probably do a quick video with her on it is she has, uh, Sarah Maiga, who, you know, she's one of our local agents. She's yeah. a mega agent. She's built a great business and she's, uh, one of, uh, national association of realtors, 30 under 30 yeah. or 2019. Yeah. yeah. She's done a great job. And, um, and one of the things that she did was she built almost like a concierge service and, and it's, it sounds great. Right. And then you kind of peel the layer up and what she's done is she's just said to these people, you, you know, here's how you qualify five-star service, you know, directly from someone that I happen to know and trust. And you continue to provide that five-star service. And we have a, a metric to how to measure that. We ask our clients how it was, and you're going to give my clients a discount. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. she's, she's done this and she's created, the, created this network and, essentially she's really not involved but it's all almost branded as an extension of her and it's kind of genius she's done a great job at that yeah but like i'm saying the careful point there you have to be careful that you uh, really stay on top of that because what happens the word gets out right another realtor start using them and then you know they're trying to grab all the business they can and they sort of forget where it started right so you have that's uh, i learned that this summer as busy as we got um that that's something that you really it's work because people you know those vendors want to grab as much business as they can so you mm -hmm. have to maintain that relationship with them. But, and that's what it is right there, right? It's the big R word. And we always come back to it. It doesn't matter if it's your vendors, your clients, right. your staff, it's all about that relationship. That's really what it is. Absolutely. So one thing I do want to talk about, it's, um, we're going to start doing again. It's amazing how many homes we're walking into that just absolutely need work, you know? Um, and so I had a program about one or four or five years ago where, you know, you go into the house as an older couple and they, they need new carpeting. They, they, the landscaping is disgusting. You know, it's just all overgrown, which to me is one of the big negatives countertops are chipped for Micah, the whole nine yards, they need painting and they don't have the money, right? So I did a program where I set aside about $30,000 and I offered to pay for this work upfront to get the house listed and then I get reimbursed at closing. And I think that's something, you know, talk about setting yourself apart. Yeah. Um, we're gonna start implementing that again because there are situations where, you know, people put houses on the market and they're in horrible condition but because the seller can't afford to do the work, right? And with this program, I think it's going to be a real value proposition and it's going to really set their houses, you know, uh, in a situation that will sell quickly for more money. So how much control do you have over the selections in that process? Are you, are you putting like a pallet in front of them where they get to choose A, B, and C for the countertop or do you choose it because you're financing it? Well, there again, we have our vendors, right? And so, uh, I, you know, my painter says, hey, I want you to use whatever is current right now, the carpet, the likewise, right? The same thing. We do it very neutral and countertops, depending on, on what's there, um, we'll do some kind of a solid surface countertop. And I generally spend, it'll be ten dollars to $12,000 per house. And mostly, mostly what we're finding is it's, it's, it's homes that are under 400 and it tends to be older people, right? Who've lived in the house for a long time. They haven't done a lot of home maintenance and they just don't have the money, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're forced to put, a lot of times to put their house on the market and it's not in the best condition, right? And well, our goal is just to get people to walk in and not have that ugh feeling. Um, <laughs> we're, we're trying to get away from the ugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly. great. It's funny yeah. when I say that, it's also, they get, they, they, it sort of makes you laugh a little bit, but they get it. They really get it. Well, yeah. And, and the reality is you're, you're saving their nest egg. You're getting yeah. them more of a return and you're fronting the liability for it. So my last question for you would be, you know, what is the, what is the safety there for the agent? You know, if they decide to take their home off the market, you know, what kind of clause or language do you have around that? Yeah, you got to be, again, you got to, it's very situational, right? Like it's got to be a situation where they absolutely have to move, not want to move. I have them sign, you know, I put a lien on the property. Um, and just in case they did take it off the market and decide not to sell, I have them sign a one-year contract. And, um, and so, I, like I said, I didn't do a ton of them in the past. I did maybe four or five, but I can tell you the impact was amazing. And I just thought, again, because li literally it's amazing how many houses we've walked into in the last two months where the older people that have a lot of work and they just don't have the money. Yeah. And so, um, so I've never gotten burned on it. Um, there's always a little bit of risk with it, but I think it's an amazing, you know, if, you, if the house shows well, because you've done these things, it's going to sell. It's going to sell. And again, here, we've got the benefit of having a worldwide network within right. Keller Williams, where there are people in other states and in other counties that are providing a similar service. And you can kind of put your heads together 
find out what's working really well and what's not and you know minimize the risk in that kind of program as well yeah and it's just knowing what to do like some people want to do some of the strangest things right and just really saying that you guys focus on those five things actually I'll, i should add six meaning cleaning, cleaning. <laughs> i got a gal for you <laughs> yeah, yeah right and so um and don't go off on the on a, you know like like some people say, i got you know we've done all the wiring we've done all the plumbing and all that kind of stuff so that's great but that doesn't get rid of the factor right it's interesting how a lot of buyers don't really uh, they're not impacted by that as much as having beautiful nice floors and clean walls and new countertops and stuff like that right and so yeah shiny shiny and clean and a little bit of zhuzh <laughs> all right all right martin thank you so much for your time today i really appreciate it i hope you agents and you sellers out there learned a lot uh, about how to get the most money out of the sale of your home and what to do maybe if you need a little help in the renovations so martin how can people get a hold of you they can uh, call us here at 734 761-3060. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>